step out to 21% because it's drawing room air into the ventilator and delivering that to the patient. Okay? It'll probably have a backup battery built in. These are used mostly for your transports. And the one that you probably run into in clinical is the LTV. That's the most common one that you'll see in the area. The transport bed, you can pull around with you. It does not have to be plugged into the wall because it has a battery. But you can't deliver an FL2 higher than 21%. However, you can attach e-cylinders to the ventilator and deliver a net valve to higher than 21%. As long as you have e-cylinders of oxygen attached to the ventilator, you can change the FO2 to whatever you want. Remember, the higher the FO2, the faster your tanks will be dry though, okay? The higher the respiratory rate or the tidal volume, the faster your tanks will bleed. So you have to be careful. It's not like calculating tank duration on a nasal cannula, okay? It could last two days. This could last maybe 30 minutes on one tank, depending on what you have set. The other two, the life care and the intermed, are home ventilators. Okay? Patients who are at home who require mechanical ventilation, but do not require a supplemental oxygen, are frequently placed on these ventilators because they are able to draw in room air and deliver these settings to the patient do not require anything higher than 21%. Your second type of ventilator power is pneumatic. You have all experienced a pneumatic ventilator already. What is it? Bird. 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 Little forest bird. King of the pneumatics. The only thing you need for these ventilators to work is a 50 psi gas source. It does not require electricity. Ever. You don't need a backup battery. So, what is another ventilator that you have heard of and seen that fits in this category? Car? The what? The Vortran. The Vortran, right? It's a great emergency ventilator for disaster preparedness. For those of you who have taken the time so far to read the articles that I posted for this week, Many of you suggested that the Joplin incident could have been prevented by using the Vortran ventilators. You're all wrong, by the way. You're all wrong. And I'll explain why later, but you're all wrong. But it was a good guess. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. So, what's important to remember about pneumatic-powered ventilators is that they, are, they come in two types. There's a pneumatic pneumatic and a fluidic pneumatic. I know it sounds kind of redundant. Pneumatic, pneumatic. The pneumatic type uses valves, venturi, and trainers. Sound familiar? Everyone knows what a venturi is, right? Where do we find venturis? Venturi masks. Venturi masks. Where else? <laughs> yeah, large volume nebulizers, right? Um, diaphragms, spring-loaded valves, and on and on and on. Bird Mark 7. If you look inside the Bird Mark 7, you will see these things, right? There's a diaphragm in there, needle valve, blah, blah, blah. Right? The fluidic one uses special physical, meaning physics, principles in order for it to work. They're either called wall attachment or beam deflection. And thank you, Joanna, for always having your book in the front row. So, no, it's okay. You're good. There is, I believe, a diagram in here, yes. On page 19, there's a diagram of uh, wall attachment and flip-flop. Yeah, flip-flop. So, the way these things work, if you look in your, in your book, is that you have, sorry, I have to pick it up a little bit to choose the drawing. <laughs> so 
So, this is the gas source here at the top. Okay? The gas is coming in here. It has two choices for direction, A and B. Right? You're walking through a forest. Do you turn to the right or do you turn to the left? And how does it decide? Well, gas either shoots in in this direction and forces it to head in this direction, or gas will shoot in from this direction and force it to go into this direction. So there's this back and forth of gas going across. So if this is for inspiratory and this is for expiratory, during inspiration, the gas would go this way to force gas into the patient. Does make sense? During exhalation, it would go this way to help draw gas out of the patient. Infant nasal CPAP systems frequently work this way. Otherwise, the patient would be trying to exhale against a lot of flow all the time. This is the fluidic beam deflection? Beam deflection. Okay. Wall attachment is a little more complicated. I'm not going to draw it out. But the diagram is right here. It's too many lines for me to draw. It's simply a way of pulling or pushing gas to go in a direction that you want it to go in. That's all it is. Um, the pneumatic, we know, are the birds. The pneumatic, pneumatic, right? And the fluidic pneumatics, one example of that is the Biomed MVP-10, which you'll probably never see. So the first two are great. We've got our power-only vents, which you will see frequently as your transport vent. The LTV is probably the one you'll encounter. The LTV is one that we will have in the lab in the fall for you to play with. The fluidic ones, the pneumatic ones, hopefully you never use them. I wish every hospital would ban IPVD. It's not a bad idea to have the Vortrans in case of a massive power failure in the Bay Area, right? We have another big earthquake. There's no power for two days. You can't rely on batteries. They are not going to last for two days. So those might be helpful. But remember, for those to work, you need a lot of gas. If you have 20 patients on ventilators and you hook them all up to Vortrans, you're going to bleed your gas source really quickly. Um, what you're going to see most common every day are, is this last category, the combined power ventilator. They require electricity and a gas source. And these are all of the modern adult ICU ventilators. Right? The 840, the Servo I, the, the Draeger. All of them are combined power. You have to have electricity or a backup battery. And you have to have how many 50 PSI gas sources? Two. two. You must have two 50 PSI gas sources in order for these ventilators to work correctly. Some of them will allow it to function intermittently on a single source, but it's going to warn you of the most annoying alarm until you fix the problem, okay? Remember that the 50 PSI source can come from anywhere. It can come from a compressor, it can come from a tank, or it can come from the wall. As long as it's needing that 50 PSI, it's happy. And remember, it doesn't even really know if you're hooking it up to air or oxygen, right? Because in the lab, what did we do? We hooked up the oxygen hose to the compressor, and it didn't care, right? All it can sense is pressure. It wants 250 PSI inputs. That's a problem, though, isn't it? If you dial 40%, but both your air and oxygen are connected to a compressor, what FiO2 are you actually delivering? 20, 20, 20 watt. Okay. If you have both of your sources somehow <coughs> jerry rigged and plugged into oxygen, and you dial in 40%, how much FiO2 are you giving? 40? 100%. Is it possible to connect an oxygen high pressure hose to an oxygen outlet? Yes. Is it possible to connect an air high pressure hose to an oxygen outlet? Sure. All you need is a reducing valve, right? Or a connection that fits. On one end it's air and the other end it's oxygen, right? Most of these uh, ventilators function internally using solenoids, valves, and switches for inspiration and exhalation. And we'll talk more about that later. 
They are microprocessor controlled, so all of these modern ventilators are computer controlled. It makes them very precise, as opposed to the old fashioned methods. The nice thing about microprocessor controlled ventilators is that every time the company comes up with a new mode, you don't have to buy a new ventilator. They come in with a laptop, they plug it into the side, and they upload the new software, and your vent's ready to go. It's great for you as the consumer, it sucks for the ventilator company, because what they found out is, hey, no one's buying new ventilators, they're only buying new modes, which is why the 840, which we have so many of, in the next three to five years will be gone, because Covidian now, which used to be Gerd and Bennett, realized that, oh wait, no one's buying new ventilators if they can just upgrade the software. So they're changing the platform. It looks very similar, but they will no longer support the 840, which means hospitals can't use it. If there's no support from the company, you can't use their device. So they're forced to buy new ones? Forcing people to buy new ventilators. Drager had the same issue. They created this wonderful ventilator that you just had to plug a laptop in, and they went, oh. Then they came out with the V series to replace everything. And they stopped supporting them. Here's the problem. You can still use the vent if they stop supporting it, but if it breaks, too bad, right? You're not gonna get it fixed. It's a good way to make a hospital buy 40 ventilators all at once, right? Okay, gas sources. Remember that the gas source has to be there, the breath to be delivered. The energy behind the breath comes from the gas source. So think about that. There isn't an electric wheel in there spinning to make the volume happen, right? It's basically a floodgate with a whole bunch of pressure behind it, right, which is your 250 PSI inputs, and the floodgate opens and the pressure goes in. So the pressure from the gas is what powers the breath. All the ventilator does is open that floodgate and close it, right? Open it, 500 milliliters deliver it, close, right? That's all it does that have a whole bunch of little plug gates. Okay? That's how it works. <coughs> Excuse me. But electricity is what tells the ventilator how to shape the breath, right? It's what tells it to open that plug gate and close it. Open it a little bit for a long time or open it a lot for a short time, right? Long high time versus a short high time. Um, Open it a lot for a higher flow rate. Open it a little for a slower flow rate. You see what I mean when I say controlling the breath characteristics? So electricity is what controls the characteristic, but the power behind it, the energy, is coming from the pressure coming into the back of the ventilator. <clears throat> Remember that you must have an oxygen and air source for a variable FO2. If you only have oxygen, can only get 100%. If you only have air, you can only get 21%. You'd be hard pressed to find a modern sorry, ICU vent that is not this category. <clears throat> there are two types of ventilators out there. Well, it's really three. We talked about the third one, uh, high frequency, but we're not really going to talk about that in this class much. Positive and negative pressure. Remember, that positive pressure ventilators deliver breaths by increasing pressure at the airway opening. Remember that gas flows due to a pressure gradient, right? So 